From the day I started learning how to code, it took me about a year to get my first job. This was without a computer science degree or going to any boot camps. Even though I eventually got my first job, I made a lot of mistakes along the way that slowed my progress from being a beginner at coding to actually being employable. I paid for courses that actually confused me more than they helped me. I watched so many YouTube videos and memorized so many concepts that didn't actually give me any value. If I could go back, I would do a lot of things differently to cut down my time to learn, which would then cut down my time to be able to get a job a lot faster. So that's what I'm going to explain in this video. The simplest way and the quickest way to learn how to code so you can try to get a job as soon as possible. Now there are four steps that you can take so you can learn how to code as quickly as possible and not waste time like I did. Now before you get too deep into coding, you want to decide on the language that you want to focus on. A language that you'll stick with and preferably a language that's pretty versatile. So it's a good idea to focus on languages that have back-end applications and front-end applications. And if they have applications outside of the typical web development roles, that's even better. And this is why I recommend starting with JavaScript or Python. Now both of these are very flexible languages that have many different applications from web development, software development, machine learning, platform development, data science, and back-end development. So you get more bang for your buck when you learn one of these languages. For example, if you like JavaScript, but you might not want to get into web development, then you may want to get into ServiceNow development or Salesforce development because both of these platforms use JavaScript as well. Now there are plenty of resources that will teach you both of these languages for free. So to get a taste of both of these languages, you can start on free code camp, go through a few of the lessons and kind of see where you might be interested in more. But once you decide on the language, do your best to stick with it and don't jump around like I did when I first started coding. When I first started coding, I started with Python and then I went to JavaScript and then I started learning jQuery and then I went to Ruby on Rails and then I went to PHP. I was all over the place and I wasted a lot of time by trying all of these different languages and frameworks and not becoming good at one of them. So now that you've chosen your language, now you wanna see how you wanna go about learning it as efficiently as possible. Now it's very tempting to get caught up in the YouTube videos that are like 15 hours long and they teach you how to go from beginner to advanced to become a Python or a JavaScript programmer. I wasted a lot of time by looking at these videos because I would watch other people implement things and I thought that I understood it enough that I could do it myself. But as soon as it was time for me to write my own code, I had no idea where to start. So if you've heard it before that the only way to learn how to code is to code. And this is why I like websites like Free Code Camp and the Odin Project. Especially Free Code Camp because you're learning concepts from a very basic level and the more you progress through the course, the concepts start to build on each other and you start to see how everything works together as a whole. Also be sure to take your time as you go through these courses and these exercises. You're going to be tempted to rush. They give you a percentage of your progress and we all want to get to 100%. But coding is not a race. You don't get to a finish line and you just feel, all right, I know how to code. I don't need to learn anything else. That will never ever happen. So take your time, understand the concepts, because if you don't, it's going to bite you in the end when you would have needed to know an earlier concept to complete something more advanced. So now that you've gone through some courses, you've done some exercises, and you have a good idea of what it means to program in the language that you chose, now it's a good idea to start doing some projects. Doing exercises and doing projects are completely different. It's one thing to learn how to manipulate a JavaScript object in an exercise. And it's another thing when you're trying to use the same type of concept within an actual project that's flowing and dynamic. So really, I don't recommend you starting to build projects on your own at the beginning. You should be guided so you have an idea on how to actually go about building projects from scratch. So if you start with JavaScript like I did, I would actually recommend that you do some projects in vanilla JavaScript. No frameworks, no libraries, just old school vanilla JavaScript. Although you might not be doing this on your job, unless you're into ServiceNow development or Salesforce development, you're probably going to be using frameworks and other libraries. But it's a good idea to start with vanilla JavaScript or just regular Python so that way you understand all the concepts before you start using frameworks. In my opinion, I feel like if you start out by using frameworks, you'd probably be able to build projects a lot quicker, but you miss some of the core concepts that you might need later on because a lot of the frameworks, they do things for you a lot easier and kind of in a shortcut method that will work for you, but you might not understand why it's working for you. So in the Free Code Camp YouTube channel, they actually have a video for vanilla JavaScript projects and Python projects, and it's a good idea to follow along and do all of these projects. You may have to set up a development environment or use some text editors, and this is good practice as well for the real world. And there are many different options out there for IDEs and text editors, but just choose the one that works best for you. I'm old school and I've always used Sublime, even though there may be other options out there that are better depending on who you ask, but that's just what I choose to use from front end development. Now, once you've gone through these videos and you've built some of these projects and you've added them to your portfolio, you added them to your GitHub account, then you should be ready to start building some projects on your own. Now, when you start building these projects on your own, it doesn't have to be anything super complicated. Even making an enhancement to the project 
audience that you built on the instructor led videos is a great way to start because in the real world a lot of times this is exactly what you'll be doing you might not come into a job and have to build something from scratch but you may come into some pre-existing code that you may have to make some enhancements on so this is a good idea to go through a project that you already have built and make some slight changes and see what you can make your own so let's say you had an api that you were using in one of your previous projects a good idea for your personal project may be to see how you can use a different api to get a different experience in the project that you built before. And the good thing about making these enhancements is that you can still add these as separate projects to your portfolio. You can describe how you built a project that was instructor led, but you wanted to try something different and this is what you came up with on your own. Just please make sure that you upload all of these to your GitHub account because you're gonna need it when you start applying. And I would even suggest that if you're in the front end development, you might wanna go the extra step of building your own personal website. That's exactly what I did when I was trying to get my first job. I used Bootstrap to build the front end part of my website and then I uploaded all of my projects to a separate page where somebody could click on the project and test it out on their own. I paid for some cheap hosting for my domain name and I feel that this was very impressive to everyone that I interviewed with. Now, once you have your projects hosted and saved on your GitHub or your personal website, you can start applying to some jobs. And you typically want to look for jobs that ask for zero to two years of experience. Doing this makes sure that you don't apply for jobs that are above your level and that you grow frustration because you don't get responses to your resume. Now, once you start applying, you want to make sure you actually have a good resume. So many people get frustrated and confused when they start applying and don't get many responses. They automatically assume it's because they're bad at coding and that might not be the case. A lot of times they just have a bad resume. Now, when it comes to resumes, there's something called an applicant tracking system. The applicant tracking system or the ATS is a system that a lot of companies use to sort and filter out good candidates from bad candidates. The companies can put in certain criteria for specific jobs that they're looking for, and that may include keywords, level of experience, and other criteria that they have. And if you don't have a majority of this criteria in your resume, you will not get a response from a recruiter. But the second part to this is that even if you do have a lot of these criteria, a lot of these keywords, if your resume is formatted incorrectly, you still won't get responses from a recruiter. The applicant tracking system has a hard time processing resumes that have a lot of formatting and a lot of designs and grids and tables and all these kind of things. So you want to simplify it as much as you can. It might not be the prettiest visually, but recruiters don't care about how visually appealing your resume is. They only care about the content. Now, if you want more information on this in detail, you can check out the Get The Call bundle that I created in the link below. This explains this entire process to make sure that you actually start getting responses to your resume. The bundle also includes a resume template that I use still to this day and a cover letter template to give you an edge up on anybody else that's applying to these jobs that you're looking for. So you make sure that you're not wasting applications and you're not wasting your time applying to these jobs. Another good thing is to make sure that you apply to the company directly. Now, if you go to LinkedIn, you'll see an option of easy apply. And I think you see the same thing on Glassdoor and maybe Indeed, but do not use these options. They're quick and they're easy, but they might not be the most effective. I used these a lot when I first started and I noticed an immediate increase in my response rate when I took the time to just start applying directly to the company. So you can use these job boards to see what jobs are out there. But once you see something that you're interested in or something that matches more or less what you've been studying and learning, go to that company's website and apply through the career page. Now, if you've built some projects, you have your GitHub ready and you have a good resume, you should start to receive some phone calls. Now, as you start to receive these phone calls, you want to focus on your soft skills. Now, knowing the language that you're applying for is obviously a given, but a lot of times people forget about the soft skills. If you can really tap into your soft skills, it'll start to open up a lot more doors for you compared to someone that just knows everything technically, but they have no personality, they have no drive, they have no passion for anything, and they think that just because they know how to code that they deserve a six-figure job. So an easy way to think about soft skills is just getting the interviewer to see you as a part of their team. So loosen up and relax, answer their questions the best you can, throw some jokes in there here and there, but really just be friendly. I mean, smile and be happy when you talk to these people because if you talk to a recruiter, these are some of the most high energy people that are working in that company and they love to see that you have that same type of energy and positivity as well. Now, even though you may have the best resume, the best projects, all the soft skills, sometimes you still might not get the job. Maybe you messed up somewhere in a technical interview or maybe you didn't have all the experience that they were looking for and that's perfectly normal the only thing that you can do is learn from each failed interview any question that you had trouble with make sure you take note of it so you can look it up and learn it after the interview i did this every time i failed the interview whether it was technical or non-technical and that was a lot of interviews that i failed but as i started to learn these concepts and start to go on more interviews i started to see a pattern of the things that i was probably going to be asked 
if I got interviewed by someone else. Now this will help you to focus on everything that you can control. You can't control how much they like you or how they feel about you, but you can control the information that you know and the things that you need to learn after each interview. So if you're applying to a bunch of jobs and you're not getting responses, your resume is probably bad. If you're starting to get phone screens and other interviews and you don't proceed from there, you're probably not employable yet, and that's fine. But if you keep going and you keep improving, you will get to a point to where you are employable and you will find a job for you as long as you don't quit too soon. So that's what I have for you in this video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.